Hi there everyone, welcome to Poor Painting with Ron. In today's video we're going to be doing a travelling wiggle paw. Well that's what I called it anyway. I'm not sure if that's the proper name but you'll figure it out soon enough what, what I mean. Well today I'm going to be using um, a thin edge canvas, 50 centimetres by 40 centimetres. And as usual, I've prepared the back using some push pins and some painter's tape. And I just sprayed a little bit of water on the back and blow dried it just to tighten it up a little bit. So it has that nice drumming sound. If it's too loose, the paint may sit in the middle or pool in the middle and wreck your painting. Right, so my canvas is ready. Now the paints I'm going to be use today, uh, using today, I thought I would do uh, a painting that gives me the feel of the Australian outback. So I've picked colours that I think would suit that idea. Uh, most of them are Montmart colours, but I've got a few different ones as well. Right, so today I'm using um, Burnt Umber, nice dark brown. Um, white, some, what's this one, brilliant red, and some gold. They're the Montmartre colours. And then the Chroma A2 acrylics, I'm using this nice yellow oxide and some light red oxide. Now for the size of canvas that I've got, I figure I need about 800 grams of paint or so. If you're not sure how to work out how much paint you use, just multiply the, the length of your canvas by the width of your canvas in centimetres. Divide your answer by 2.5 and that will give you the approximate grams of paint that you'll need for most pours. Now, that being said then, I'll need about 130 grams of each colour. Now, the Montmartre colours, I mixed about one part paint to one part Floetrol, which is my pouring medium today, to get the consistency that I like. Uh, the Chroma A2 acrylics are quite a bit thicker, so I ended up using about one part paint and two parts Floetrol, and I even used a, a little bit of water in the oxide because it was just really thick. But the consistency I see I was going for was a little on the thick side um, for this pour, a little bit like warm honey. You'll see what, what I mean in a little bit. All right, so let's get started. Righto, we're back. I've got my paints mixed up and I had to think a little bit about what order I wanted to put them in the cups because I didn't want the white and the red next to each other because they make pink and I don't really want pink. And I didn't want colours that were too similar to each other to be right next to each other as well. So I've gone dark, burnt umber, then I've got the yellow ochre, and then white, then the light red ochre, the gold, and then the red, and then back to the burnt umber. Now I'm going, now I'll just show you the consistency. It is reasonably thick. I get quite I get quite a large mound on the top of the cup when I spoon it like that. And if I do a little twirly shape, it stays there for about three or four seconds or so. So I've got it reasonably thick. Now I've kept the, the colours the same, except um, the consistency the same for the colours, except the metallic. I've kept that thicker than the others quite a bit thicker. If it's the same consistency, it tends to disappear. It still may disappear in this painting, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see how we go there. All right, so I'm going to, I'll just put this aside. So I'm going to be using two cups today and I'll layer the paint in the cups. And as I pour it out of the cup, I will uh, wiggle the cup backwards and forwards and move it across my canvas. Now I saw something similar on another video on YouTube so I thought I'd give it a go today just to see what happens. Right, so I've got my cups here. I'll, I'll layer them the same as each other. So I'll start with my burnt umber. I'll just pour it down the side. Got 
enough paint for one more layer, but just to see what happens, I'll pour from the other side of the cup. An experiment. Well, I'm experimenting, I may as well continue if it's yuck. It's probably too much paint, but i rather have too much than not enough. Otherwise, you just end up stretching everything too far. All right. Now, I will pour out from my original side that I started with. Hopefully, I don't end up with mud. All right. Uh, here's my canvas. Now, the idea is to pour it out and wiggle backwards and forwards as I move the cup along. So I'll do one cup this way and I'll do the other cup that way. Let's have a go. Turn the corner. I think I'll get some interesting designs happening. And I'll just go off the edge there. All right, and then I'll start up here and I'll sort of go in this direction and finish off down here somewhere. If the paint was too thin, I imagine it would all blend too much. Oh, no, I might. Go in this direction. Oops, where did I dribble? There. Oh, nothing I can do about that. Well, that looks interesting. Now, before I stretch it all out, I'll give it a bit of a torch to get rid of the air bubbles. If the paint was too thin, I wouldn't get all those lovely ribbons. It would sort of all like disappear and blend together. It's fine if that's the look you want, but I don't necessarily want that look. I didn't use any silicon or anything to create cells, even though the flow troll may create some, some cells on its own, particularly if there's air bubbles. So I can see like a little cell happening there and there and there, but I shouldn't get too many. Ah, okay. Now I don't want to lose too much paint to begin with. So I'll just move that up that way a bit. Now you could have put a, a base coat on if you want to, 
just to enable the paint to slide better over the canvas. Okay. I'll just bring the paint up to the middle. I can see some of the gold. It's not all gone. I've got a bit of a, a shine happening. If you had a long skinny canvas, you could just do one cut, I suppose, along the canvas. I don't want to lose too much paint. Okay, that was quick. Now most of my paint's on the top, so I'll keep it up there and I'll do this side. I'm going to lose that little tail. That, that doesn't matter. Okay. And I'll go down to the other corner. And then I'll see where I need to stretch it out more to get the composition that I like. And if you didn't have enough paint, you'd have no room to play with. Okay, well, that looks interesting. Uh, this part up here is a bit yuck looking so I might stretch everything that way and get rid of some of that because I like what's happening down that end more it looks a little bit like um, a grevillea flower You don't have to do it fast. So I'll get rid of most of that yucky grey colour if I can. There it goes. There we go. And then I'll just stretch it back. Play with my composition a bit. Oh, that's interesting. Is that looking? I've certainly got some very interesting patterns happening in this painting. I really love the the swirls and it's got a little bit of um, gold speckles in it as well. Yeah, I'm not too keen on the grey bits, but I did get rid of most of those. But I think it certainly has a very tropical Australian feel to it. Now I'll just wash my gloves and tidy up the edges and then I'll bring you in for a closer look. So here is the finished painting. I think it turned out really nice. We certainly got some very interesting effects happening, particularly up at this end of the canvas.
I really love those long fingers and the little bits of gold really enhance it. Now I don't really particularly like the burnt umber in this painting, the really dark bits, so I probably wouldn't use the burnt umber again, but I'd certainly use the other colours. I really enjoyed that experiment today. Um, I think the result was really interesting. There are certainly things that I'll change up next time. Like I said, I, I probably won't use the burnt umber again in this colour combination because uh, it gave a sort of a yucky colour when it, was, when it combined with the others. But I'd use the others again, of course, and I'd, uh, I'd like to try using some more metallics as well. But it's certainly an interesting technique, this travelling wiggle pour. I really think a thicker mix works much better with this type of pour than, than a mix on the thin side because you don't want the colours blending. You want those nice swirly, feathery shapes in your painting. Now, the, the big straight line down the middle, I wasn't too fussed about. I mean, it looks all right, but... I think I'll do a little bit more swirling around next time to get a bit of more of a, a swirly effect happening in the painting. But what did you think? Is that a sort of technique that you'd like to have a go at yourself? I think there are heaps and heaps of possibilities with this one. Now, as usual, if you like what you saw today, please take um, press the like button. That would be fabulous. Helps my videos get found on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please take a moment to subscribe. So, happy painting, and we'll see you again next time.